Don't you just hate that you know what you're supposed to do to take your tennis game to the next level, but you just don't do it? Ah! You know that you're supposed to hit the ball harder. Harder! You know you're supposed to hit the ball with more spin. Brush up the back of the ball. More brushy. You know you're supposed to split step. Split, step, split, step. But we don't do those things. Even though we keep gaining more information, we keep gaining more knowledge, it seems like a lot of times our level just gets stuck and we just plateau. And even though we take lesson after lesson and we do training session after training session, we play match after match, and we keep watching YouTube video after YouTube video, we keep understanding more about what we're supposed to do, but we just don't do any of those things. So if you're sick of that, then keep watching this lesson because I'm gonna tell you exactly why it happens, but more importantly, how to break free of that crazy merry-go-round and actually level up your game. In my last lesson, which you can watch right here if you haven't already, I talked about the improvement circle, which explains how we can move from learning new information to practicing that information consciously to being able to do the new thing correctly, but still having to think about it. And then finally being able to subconsciously do that new thing. So it's a new habit. You just don't even have to think about it anymore. Here's where players get stuck. They get stuck in between the collection of the information and getting it, but not being able to do it yet. And the subconscious competence part where they don't have to think about it anymore. A lot of times players just get stuck only being able to do this. They know what they're supposed to do and they can do it, but only while they really, really, really concentrate on it and they never make this last jump. And if you don't approach your training, if you don't approach how you practice the correct way, then you end up just spinning your wheels and that's what this lesson is about. I'm gonna show you how to get unstuck from that crazy merry-go-round. What trips players up and keeps them stuck and what trips up a lot of coaches as well is they're way too results focused as opposed to process focused. And specifically, what really gets in the way is the ball. What I mean by that is, it's one thing to be able to do a new forehand. Let's say you're trying to hit more topspin. You know you need to drop your racket lower and come up more steeply. It's one thing to be able to do that correctly without a ball, with a shadow swing. But a lot of times players and coaches get a false sense of accomplishment when they're able to do it without the ball. They're like, okay, great. I'm doing it right. I, I understand it. I can do it. All right, let's go. Like, let's play. I've got my new forehand but the ball ends up short circuiting their success because when the ball gets put into the equation, now all of a sudden the player subconsciously is thinking, I wanna make this shot. AKA they start focusing on the result or the outcome. And they think I wanna hit this forehand over the net and in the court. And as soon as a player starts optimizing for that, and this all happens beneath the surface in our subconscious, now our brain is just gonna select the way of hitting our forehand that it knows is most reliable, is most confident, the way we've done it the most times that we know is gonna hit the ball into the court. And what is that? It's our old habit. It's our old way of hitting the forehand that might not be technically very good, but at least we know we're gonna get success. So how do we break free of that trap and stop chasing our tail and stop being stuck at the same level? Well, in a nutshell, we need to stop treating this and this as two steps and break it down to be much more granular so that we can have some success and follow a process that moves us in the direction of actually building a new and better habit. Let me show you an example of how I did that with a recent student so you can learn kind of the process that I follow and apply it to your own game so you can actually make substantive changes to your game and actually level up your skills. Ready? All right, all forehands. The first thing we did together was rally some forehands while I gathered some video, and then we did a quick video analysis breakdown to find out where she could improve. And we discovered that, like a lot of players, she was not leading the swing with her body using the correct kinetic chain, and instead she was just swinging her, her arm forwards, which is really weak and ineffective. It's very hard to develop those things we need. More power, more spin, more smoothness, and more precision and more consistency. It's almost impossible to do that when your body gets stuck and your arm does all the work. So the first step in our training was to remove the ball and just have her practice setting up for her forehand 
and initiating with her hips and her shoulders. No ball involved, and she wasn't even completing the swing. All I wanted her to do was just feel what it was like to have her body go first and her arm stay behind, just that one piece, because that is kind of at the core of her bad habit. Her bad habit is her arm going first and her body being second, and I needed her to feel what it was like to reverse that old habit. The second training progression I had her do was to go through her entire swing, but still segment it and do one piece at a time. So I didn't want her to go like quickly through a full forehand swing, but instead kind of take a little bit of a pause, a little bit of a break at different positions, check in with her body, and really make sure that she was doing it correctly. So in other words, we were focusing on going from consciously incompetent, which initially, even breaking it into pieces, she couldn't do it correctly. And I wanted her to take it very slowly and do one step at a time so that she could slowly make her way to being able to do it correctly while thinking about it. So notice we've taken this one step and we've broken it into multiple stages. I didn't explain it to her and be like, oh, by the way, this, this is what you're doing. And then just throw balls at her and see if she could do it correctly. I didn't even have her try to hit a ball before we took a couple different stepping stones here and we broke the gap between consciously incompetent, where she knew what she was gonna do, but she couldn't do it yet, and consciously competent. I took a couple stepping stones in between so that she could just be calm and focus on the process instead of worrying about the results or the outcome. Her third training progression was to now do the entire forehand swing in one smooth, flowing, continuous motion. We're slowly making our way towards introducing a ball. I wanted to make sure that she could do her preparation, her initiation with her body, have her arm and her racket follow behind, do the full follow through and like check all those boxes correctly, competently, before introducing a ball at all. So we've done three steps now and we haven't even hit a ball yet. This is critical to rewiring old habits. If you're not taking these steps and if you're just gathering tons of information and then swinging at the ball lots of times with your racket and then gathering more information and then swinging lots of times with your racket, all that information you're gathering is not just magically making its way into your body. You have to take it step by step and train your body specifically what to do slowly and very deliberately. So at this point, I tried to progress to step number four and actually throw her a ball. We've done all of these segmented shadow swings and smooth shadow swings, and we checked in with the video. We made sure she was doing it right, and she was consciously, competently doing it correctly. And then I said, okay, let's test it out. And I threw her a ball. And guess what happened? She went 100% right back to her old habit, and she went right back to standing sideways and hitting the ball just with her arm. So at this point, a lot of players who are kind of training or practicing themselves, and even a lot of coaches who are trying to teach adult competitive players would try to solve this by just throwing more balls at and being like, no, no, you're not doing it yet. You're not doing it yet. I, I told you, turn, you know, don't turn to the side, hit it out in front, hit it out in front and just keep hitting balls, hitting balls, hitting balls. We need more stepping stones. We need more progressions in between. It was obvious to me that including the ball was too strong of a trigger. It was pulling back her old forehand. So I started tossing balls out to the side, away from where she was standing, not so that she could run and try to do it right, but instead so that she could just time her new forehand, focus on the process of doing it correctly, and let the ball go by and just use it as a training tool or training mechanism instead of worrying about the outcome or worrying about whether or not the ball was going to go over, or worrying, worrying about whether or not she hit it hard or whether or not it stayed inside the line. She didn't have to worry about any of that, but the ball was still there in the picture. And what's crazy, I call these fake tosses. What's crazy is even though she knew she didn't have to hit the ball, it still tried to pull her back into her old habit. So we just stayed patient and did some repetitions going from shadow swings to fake tosses, shadow swings to fake tosses. And what we did was we repeated that until we made our way to being consciously competent with the fake tosses. So notice, we've made our way through to this point in the circle multiple times. 
We did it at first with a segmented shadow swing. Then we did it with a smooth, continuous shadow swing. Now we've demonstrated competency while thinking about it with a fake toss. Fantastic. So we've made our way through this cycle three different times with three different layers or levels of difficulty before even hitting a ball. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when you have an old deep habit, this type of process to reverse that type of old habit and actually do something new, it's necessary and it's needed without just going back to your old habit again and again and again. So we started doing a sequence of shadow swings, then fake tosses, and then tossing her a ball to hit. And it was through those stepping stones that she hit finally her best forehand, her most athletic forehand she's ever hit in her life. Yeah, good, that's the best forehand you've ever hit in your life. <laughs> and now towards the end of our training together, we're making it to consciously competent with a real hit. And we see proof on the video that she's hitting the ball from a dramatically more athletic, more out in front position with her body, her shoulders, her hips facing forwards at contact instead of staying sideways. And so this is huge. This is great progress. Is this more work and kind of a little more tedious and a little bit more painstaking than what most players and most coaches go to the trouble of doing? Yes. But if you want to change an old habit, this is what's necessary. And now the big question is, how do we go from being able to do each of those slightly harder, slightly harder, slightly harder training progressions consciously to now bridging the gap and being able to do it automatically, subconsciously. That's what I'm gonna talk about in my next lesson.